Hey guys, it's Jay, and I'm back in the kitchen again today for another episode of Foodie Friday. Now, it's been quite an eventful week so far this week. We had Pi Day on March 14th, 3.14. We had the Ides of March on the 15th at Two Brew Tank. And today it is Friday, which is the 17th of March, St. Patrick's Day. I got a touch of the green on. Some of my ancestry comes from England and Scotland, I know. There's probably some Ireland in there too, so. I decided I would try to pay tribute to all those ancestors by cooking something delicious that I love, which is shepherd's pie, or cottage pie, depending on what meat you use. Uh, the, one of the big secrets today that we're doing to make it a little bit healthier is instead of potatoes, shh, don't tell anybody, we're using cauliflower. No, wait, 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 don't click away. This is gonna work. Promise. Stay tuned. So our first thing we're gonna to want to do in getting ready to prepare that cauliflower is put some water on the stove on high. Ooh, makes a cool echo when I talk into the pot. Don't do that. This is my favorite four quart pot, about half full of water. We're gonna put it on the stove on high heat and toss some salt into it. Toss! And I just like to kind of wave my hand over the pot. I don't measure this. So while our potato water is coming up to a boil, we're gonna dice some vegetables for the meat mixture on the base. I normally like to use about four medium carrots or so. I ended up having baby carrots on hand today, so that's what I'll be using, and about four ribs, is that what they're called? Four sticks of celery. So let's get to dicing. Look at these professional cutting skills. You didn't see that. call this rustic. They don't all have to be the same size, of course. There we go. Something about same size, even cooking time, something, something. Did I mention rustic? Let's go. So now that we have our vegetables diced, we're going to introduce them in a pan with some oil over medium heat until they start softening up. Look at this beautiful pan action. We'll go with however much oil that was. We'll call it a tablespoon or so. Over medium heat and we'll let that get warm. Look, you can see the reflection of my stove bulb in the oil. Woo. All right, our oil has had a couple of minutes to heat up. We're gonna go ahead and put in our vegetables. But these are gonna sit here, come to temperature and start softening up a little bit. Back to the cutting board. So now our vegetables are softening, our water is coming to a boil, we are going to dispatch with some cauliflower. This has already been rinsed and semi-prepared, so I really just want to chop the core out of this and make it into some nice floretti type things that we can boil up. Eh, monstrous florets, why not? Our vegetables are making noise now. Our water is starting to come to a boil. Life is good in Ireland or England or wherever I am right now. I have the vegetables on medium. I'm going to drop them down to medium, medium low because I don't really want them to brown. We just kind of want them to soften. Water has reached a bubblage. Time to insert some cauliflower. That bowl was not quite sufficient. That required two trips. Poke, poke, poke. We'll let this come back up to a boil. We're going to let our vegetables soften for about 10 minutes and our cauliflower boil once it gets boiling for about 10 minutes. So convenient. All right, our vegetables have been softening for about 10 minutes. It took our cauliflower about five or six minutes after we started the vegetables to catch up. So we're going to let that keep going in the background. Time to think about meat selection. You can use pretty much any ground meat. Traditionally, this is done with ground lamb. I believe a cottage pie is done with ground beef. If you've seen any cooking videos on this channel, you know we're probably using chicken or turkey. So we've got some ground turkey today that was on manager special for $3.19 nonetheless. One pound ground meat. So we are going to add this to our vegetable pan, bring the heat up a little bit, and cook until browned. Our vegetables are softening, our cauliflower is boiling, the air is filled with the aroma of cabbage smelling products, and here comes some ground turkey to the party. So we will just chop a chop a chop of this until it is all brown and delicious. 
and raising the heat, like I said, to probably medium high would be advised. Now I like to cook this until most of the moisture is gone and the pan starts to dry out and you can hear a satisfying hiss. We're not quite there yet. So our meat is still coming to the perfect shade of brown. Our cauliflower has been boiling for 10 minutes. It's now time to pull it off the stove and strain it. But we're gonna reserve, I'm gonna save aside about a cup of the cooking liquid because we're gonna use some of that shortly. Time to drain. Now before we tend to the cauliflower, the meat needs our attention. So let's go back there and then we'll come back and make some potatoes. All right, we've reached the phase where the pan has started running out of liquid and you get some very satisfying hisses and crackles out of this. So now we are going to bolster this with the addition of some more liquid. We are going to give it a quarter cup of chicken broth. You could use beef broth if you wanted a beefy flavor. Woo, listen to it go. I'm gonna reduce the heat back down to medium. We just want a gentle simmer on this. We are also going to take this time to add in one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And since we don't usually use fresh onion, we like to use this minced stuff. One tablespoon of dried minced onion, which will kind of rehydrate. Now we're also bringing some other members to this party. We have one and one thirds cup of frozen peas and one and one thirds cup of frozen corn. One and one thirds cups, cup, sure, whatever, put it in the pan. These don't take that much time to cook, so I figure adding them now is fine. And we're gonna let this combine and simmer for about 10 more minutes. There we go. So I'm going to reduce the heat actually to medium low and let this relax for about 10 minutes. So now let's tend to our pot of cauliflower. I know what you're thinking, a pot of cauliflower is not that exciting, but believe me, with the right tools, it actually doesn't take very much to make these cauliflower potatoes delicious. Let's do it. So right off the bat, I know I wanna add about a teaspoon of some seasoned salt up in here. This is a half teaspoon measure, but two halves make a whole. We are going to use the hand blender. You could probably mash these with a regular thing, but why when you have one of these? Now at this point, they're a little thick, so that's where the cooking liquid comes in. I like to add probably about, not this much, let's say a quarter cup of the starchy, salty cooking liquid back in, and then we blend them some more. Okay, I mean really, can we be real right now? Can you look at this pot? Can you tell me the glory of these beautiful mashed potatoes. Look at them. Look at the glory. By the time you put these on top of the meat mixture and put some cheese on it and bake it, it's delicious. Let's put it all together. Step one, preheat oven to 400 degrees. Step two, retrieve dish of cooking. This is a 9 by 13 glass model that I favor. Step three, add meat and vegetable mixture that has been bubbling away. Eh, mine went for about eight minutes. I'm in a hurry. Step four, purists avert your eyes and your ears and whatever else. I decided this recipe needed just a little bit more nutrition, so I am adding one 15 and a half ounce can of pinto beans, opened and drained. They're not in here, they're in the strainer. Let's add them. Did I say rinsed? Opened, rinsed, and drained. Let's add them. Now, could I have included the beans in the meat and vegetable mixture? Yes. Did I? No. It's my video. I don't know. S step five. Are we on five? Step six, seven. It's mashed potato time. Mashed potato time. Step something, we're gonna add about one cup of shredded cheese atop the mashed potatoes. Don't they look like mashed potatoes? They smell like boiled cauliflower, but.
We don't need a ton of cheese. We'll share the cheese love all the way to the edges. It's not made with love if you don't poke every piece of cheese with your finger. Yeah, that is it. We are going to insert this in the 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes. And we're gonna look at it. If the cheese is brown, we're gonna take it out. We're gonna eat it. If it's not brown, we're gonna hit broil until it turns brown. So here we go, 30 minutes. Thirty minutes later, and look what we have: golden brown, delicious bubbliness of yum. That's words, right? Mmm. Oh, potatoes. The first time I ever made this, Dee accused me of faking the potatoes. She thought that I had actually somehow snuck back to the grocery store and bought some potatoes and used on this. The smashed cauliflower recipe was so convincing. Texture wise, it's just amazing. So give this one a try. Now let's see how we did nutrition wise. Here are the numbers for the entire recipe. If you cut this into six pieces or if you cut this into eight pieces. We usually prefer the six piece method. It's a little heavy on the fat, but that is mostly just because of the meat and cheese selection. You can choose things that are better. You could do all white meat stuff, or you could just do some fatty ground beef and roll on with it. So make it as healthy as you like, or unhealthy as you like, I guess. We try to, we like this, this combination. So let's see how we did at the cash register. There is our total recipe cost, and if you break it down over eight servings, or if you break it down over six servings, not bad. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Foodie Friday for St. Patrick's Day. We're having shepherd's cottage pie, something or other with cauliflower. So if you haven't already, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We've got foodie videos and songs and cruise vlogs and adventures and who knows what on the channel, all sorts of madness. So keep it here, subscribe if you haven't, and until next time, rock on.